how did you go about um, your work as a rehabilitation in, with with the players? And did you how much of the osteo side of things did you bring into your reconditioning um, philosophy? Yeah, so my time at Brisbane, I was part of the medical team as as an osteopath treating uh, the players and, and also. Um, providing, I guess, uh, exercise ideas from an injury prevention or, or mitigation perspective and worked really closely with Matt Haas and Alex Clark around that time. And we had a fantastic medical uh, crew in Shane Lemke and worked with Toby Watson, who um, had been on the Tour de France and also Scott Fraser and, and Pete Lyon, these guys that have all been within professional sport for um, a significant amount of time. And so they really helped, uh, I guess, develop my uh, skill set from an osteopathic perspective and how that fit within the greater scheme of, of our high performance department. And then I transitioned more into the performance aspect. At what point in your career do you start also topping up what you re- you know, your top three um, traits as a practitioner? Yeah, so I think the the key um, initially is I was um, hired at the Brisbane Lions to be an osteopath. So the, the first priority is be as good as an osteopath as I can be and make sure I'm an elite in that area. And then what are the aspects that I think are going to make me more employable or better at my role moving forward? And so for me, it was using the people around me in, in the, the Lions environment early on. Uh, and some of my mentors to kind of better identify, you know, I guess my growth areas. And so from from a performance and strength and power prescription perspective, there was a little bit of that. For those, whether it be developing footballers that may have just had an injury and are, and are currently in rehabilitation, what, what are some things you've seen over time that are trends when rehab doesn't go well um, that you try and make sure that athletes understand early days when when they're in rehabilitation? or re- re- reconditioning yeah. things? I think where possible, it's uh, getting uh, the athlete to start early. And um, and that may, you know, if we're talking about soft tissue injuries, that can tend to be quite early. It can be day one post-injury. But, um, you know, it's understanding that movement is medicine and uh, and the athlete will get lots of confidence out of being able to to move and move early. And so where possible trying to to have that as as one of your key philosophies i think is important and that even goes for possibly uh bone injuries and tendon injuries as well there is always something you can do so focus on on what the athlete can do and whether that's from a cross training perspective a, a strength perspective it's really important for for their psychological um motivation for young developing footballers out there that maybe don't have a strength and conditioning coach what would be um, what would be your top three things that you think are really important for, for footballers to make sure they're doing, uh, developing footballers? Oh. Doesn't have to be training, training but just yeah. Consistency is key. Um, yeah. So, you know, m- maintaining uh, consistent uh, running exposure, consistent high speed and, and sprint running exposure, but also making sure you have consistent skill exposure. I think sometimes we can get caught up in, oh, I need to get fitter, so I'm just going to run. But making sure that you're exposed to the skill development aspect is is key from an injury prevention perspective. I think the research is pretty clear that uh, there are a couple of, of valuable exercises if you, if you don't have um, strength and conditioning uh, advice that, you know, performing a Nordic once a week, performing some adductor um, strength, Copenhagen's or, or other variations once a week uh, can have a, a benefit on maintaining tissue resilience. Strength and conditioning aspects, what else do you think osteopaths can provide for footy, footy players? Uh, he's just graduated as an osteopath and has always been a dream of his to find uh, himself in a football environment. He's AFL obsessed and was introduced to osteopathy five years ago by himself and, and like to one day go down a similar path and help elite athletes perform at their best. There you go. That's a good one. So I think, as I mentioned before, making sure you're, you're elite at your osteopathic assessment, um, clinical decision-making, your, your, your treatment skills, your ability to change, um, pain 
uh, uh, whether that via a manual technique or whether it be via education, and then your initial acute injury uh, prescription. Those are, are going to need to be your your one wood. Then developing uh, your S and C knowledge around reconditioning. Uh, from a running perspective and understanding the different aspects of MAS, aerobic capacity, uh, high intensity training, I think is important if you're wanting to to progress into um, elite sport.